It's all going sideways. Yeah. Hey, Will, that's what's happening. It's going sideways. We, uh, we got three hot spots right now, and there's actually a lot more than that that you never even hear about. But just the three we're hearing about, Syria, Afghanistan, North Korea. What's going to happen here? Well, I, I think it's all going very well behind the scenes. Um, the bad guys, as I call them, the military industrial complex and the people who have controlled us for all these years are being thrown out. And I think I don't I don't put much credence in the people who are uh, thinking that Trump went to the dark side with all this. I don't think so at all. I think he's just playing uh, playing his role. And there's a secret agenda going on behind the scenes. I think Russia, China and the U.S. are all working together on this. Um, and you put those three countries together and and you know, who it, that's what it takes to stand up to these bad guys, you know, the military industrial complex complex and the, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and whatever you want to call them, um, it does seem to me that the, the tide has changed and they are being removed from power, which is a great thing. Yeah. So let's look at that missile strike in Syria. It reminds <laughs> me it reminds me of Clinton's attack on Somalia when he blew up the aspirin factory. I mean, those cruise missiles look like they were some extra old models that they test fired to get rid of. And they hit kind of a meaningless target. They didn't fully destroy it, which was certainly within their capabilities. But nobody's saying that Trump is an agent of Vladimir Putin anymore, are they? Well, that was the whole idea behind it. And, you know, the whole false flag of the, the Syrian attack and uh, the original Syrian attack and then Trump's false flag of, of his bombing in an empty airfield. If you see if you see pictures of the airfield, it's got uh, grass growing out of it. It's, it has I mean, the MiGs. Whole, it has these the whole, MiG-17s. I mean, they're o o probably older than you and almost as old as MiBix. They look like something out of the Korean War. <laughs> yeah, but if you look at the um, the whole concept, the uh, Obama administration tried to pull the same thing. Oh, my God, we have to save the babies, save the babies. And that's mm. the whole pretext to go into war in, in Syria because they want to put a pipe line through Syria. I mean, the whole thing is so insane. But Trump absolutely turned the cards on him. And now Trump isn't seen as the ultimate bad guy anymore, even though CNN is trying to make him out that way. Um, Trump's he's made a brilliant move by bombing an empty airfield to change <laughs> the narrative away from, you know, colluding with Putin to now Trump's a warmonger or you know, not even a warmonger. No, Trump is no longer in bed with Putin. So now they can close that case, you know, the investigation and then open up the real investigations into uh, what was going on with the pedophilia and uh, mm -hmm. military industrial complex. All that stuff needs to come out. And uh, if we're going to move forward, Trump has to be squeaky clean <laughs> as we get there. And I think he is. Uh, he's getting there now. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they had anything on him, Bix, don't you think they would have used it by this point? Uh, yes and no. Trump is not the, the main guy in charge of this counter revolution that's going on to throw out the bad guys. Trump is an important player and he was the only guy, you know, they tried to get Ron Paul in for the last you know few elections. Mm -hmm. and, and Ron, in his early days, he probably could have got there. But as he got older, he wasn't as fast and he wasn't you, you really needed a bull in the China shop yeah. to get put in place to take out these criminals. Uh, and, and that's exactly what uh, Trump is. He's certainly a bull in a china shop. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's it's great. Uh, uh, it, as long as you know behind the scenes that this this battle is pretty much already won by the good guys, mm -hmm. and now it's all about taking out the few remaining you know uh, strongholds. The European Union is still controlled by the bad guys, and oh, yeah. and that'll be gone uh, with the implosion of the banking system over there. And the derivatives are just off the charts in Europe. Blow away anything that the U.S. is uh, saying. We have problems with because of the lack of regulation they had, and now they're getting stricter regulations. So Deutsche Bank is is once again falling. I think that stocks dropped like thirty percent um, mm -hmm. in the last two months. So yeah, keep an eye on Deutsche Bank once again. Um, they were kind of bailed out by the Chinese and at the end of the third quarter last year when their stock dropped below ten dollars because it would have triggered a lot of these um, yeah cocoa bonds meltdowns. Yep. Well, yeah, the cocoa bonds are the big ones because cocoa bonds haven't been triggered yet. Uh, it's convertible collateral barn bonds that get you know changed into common stock. Basically, your bond yeah. turns into common stock in line and dilutes the the uh, common stock stock base of the company. Crazy, crazy invention, cocoa bonds. Uh, but they did it to rig, you know, financial engineering is what they called it in Europe. Oh, yeah. Well, these engineers uh, should go back and go back to school because uh, obviously they never stayed long enough to get a degree. 
Well, it's not like they teach you this kind of stuff in school. <laughs> school, well, you know, some it's, it's, schools, in, skull and in, bones uh, yeah. school, right? <laughs> yeah, how to how to how to rig the system to get around any rules that are put down by government, basically, is what they teach them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, right? I mean, that's uh, there's a certain portion that are trained to be going into this stuff. And, yeah, that's yeah. actually a, it's a, I think it's even a major in certain business schools, financial engineering. <laughs> <laughs> this, you think about it, you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. How to rig the markets with computers. How's that? Oh, beautiful thing. So so I wanted to talk to you about Casper. My son recently was shopping for a mattress. He went into a store that was bombarded by salesmen trying to upsell him, spent thousands of dollars on a mattress, completely unnecessary. But Brandon is a very savvy shopper. So he goes online, he finds Casper.com, C-A-S-P-E-R.com, orders the mattress from them at an amazingly attractive, fair price. He's in love with the mattress, gets delivered to his door, opens up the package, lays it out. The mattress like comes to life. These guys know what mattresses are about. It's got incredible supportive memory foams. It's an award-winning sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right amount of bounce. They've got over 20,000 reviews with an average ranking of 4.8 stars. So they are really becoming the internet's favorite mattress. You get free shipping and returns within the U.S. and Canada. You try it for 100 nights, risk-free. If you don't love it, they pick it up and they refund you everything. Designed, developed, and assembled in the United States. And you can save $50. You just go over to Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R dot com slash F-S-N. Put in the promo code F-S-N. You save 50 bucks. It's really an amazing company. They've put together an amazing product. They've simplified buying a mattress. You don't have to go into a store any longer and get swarmed by these commission salesmen who want to sell you the most expensive mattress around without respect to what your needs are, both financially and as far as the sleep surface is concerned. So just go over to Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R dot com slash F-S-N, order one today and save. So, well, what about social unrest here on the uh, home front? Uh, what do you see in there? Uh, it's already happening. I, I live five miles from Berkeley and oh, every right. time yeah. there's any kind of protest, uh, there's, you know, rioting in the streets, pretty soon it'll come to guns. That's what's the really scary part. It will come to guns. Um, when the financial system breaks down and the anger gets pointed at where it should be pointed towards the bankers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see, but you know, George Soros hires these people. I know rent them mobs. Yeah. yeah. Rent them mob to, to go into, I, I don't know. Yet, I don't know why, you know, the good guys, as I call them, haven't taken Soros out um, and his his funding mechanisms. I, I mean, they're, they're not causing too much trouble. The the Obama army is, I, I think, has been uh, exposed and is going to be shown the door with the um, all the revelations of what was going on there. Susan Rice, great example. She's just the, the yeah. pinpoint of of all the upper Obama administration doing illegal acts. So we'll mm -hmm. see what happens when that goes uh, when that moves forward. But they can't move all that stuff forward until the the Trump Putin investigation is put to bed, which I, I think it should be in the next couple of weeks. Well, you know that they have nothing. And you know how you know? Because the meme, again, on the uh, legacy mainstream media, they aren't really relevant. It's just the uh, kind of when you fail to perceive your own irrelevancy, you become <laughs> you become a caricature of yourself. You become absurd. And that's what the mainstream media has become. But now they're back to his tax returns. All right. And, um, I know it's, is that, is it's this, so ridiculous. Oh, like, does anyone really care that much? I don't care if he made 100 million or he lost 100 million. Or he made a billion and lost a billion. Or if he cheated. I mean, yeah. the, the reality well, is they're, looking, <laughs> they're, they're so desperate for something mm -hmm. to get on him. Now that they have to, you know, forget the, the Russian angle, which is a great move by Trump. I, I, I have been saying since, you know, Trump first dropped bombs in Syria on that empty airfield. I've been saying Trump is doing this as a tactic to change the narrative on Russia. And it, it worked 100 percent. Now they can drop that case and go after the real stuff. <laughs> so distraction. And, and it was masterful, but, wasn't it? It really was masterful when you get down to it. Oh, my God. He's he's brilliant. Him and his people are just brilliant the way they're playing the media and the left and the right. And this time he suckered in all the alt uh, alt media. 
I mean, everybody's saying, even Alex Jones, what is Trump doing? Oh, my God. I mean, but you had to sucker everybody in. Everybody had to be, you know, in belief that Trump has been compromised for this plan to work. And it worked like a charm. Yeah. I mean, and like we said, nobody is saying he's uh, he's Putin's bitch anymore. It's, it's exactly now they're saying, oh, my God, Trump's going to go to nuclear war and Russia's going to get involved and China's going to get involved. In North Korea. No, it's not going to happen. Russia, China and the United States, the good guys within all those countries are working together. And you get those three countries working together to take out the bad guys. That's the only way to take these guys out. And they're doing it piece by piece. Yeah, piece by piece. And so they've allowed the price of gold to go up a little bit. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't even look at the price of gold and silver. Remember, those are prices set on the comics and the LBMA. Those are the yeah. only two markets and neither of them are physical markets. Both right. of them are derivatives. Yes. And you can you can tell by the volumes. Uh, mm -hmm. the volumes on the comics are over 100 billion ounces of silver last year were traded, which is insane. There hasn't even been 100 billion ounces ever mined in the history of humanity. And then in uh, in London, which is supposed to be, the LBMA is supposed to be a physical market. Uh, last year, they had tra gross transfers of over 130 billion ounces, which is even more insane. Yeah, so they crazy. neither of them are uh, real physical markets. So you got to ask yourself, well, where is the price of silver determined? If if we're not going to use the comics and the LBMA, both electronic markets, where are we going to find the price of silver when the system falls apart? <laughs> that is a great question. And obviously it's going to be set someplace, isn't it? Well, I, I would think at the beginning when the chaos is hitting it, it It'll be it'd be an education of people on why silver and gold are important when they lose their checking account, savings account, four hundred one k, and all that in the in the derivative meltdown. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't see silver and gold prices uh, like automatically being the highlight. Um, I think the the markets will shut down with the crash of the banks, and then they got to start up something new. There'll be a lot of suggestions put forward as to what the new monetary system will be. Ultimately, they'll all fail if somebody has to decide. So in the United States, you know, we have gold and silver. As I mean, the the legal definition of a dollar is is a certain amount of silver, right? Um, and gold is also gold and silver are supposed to be the money of the United States. If we return to a constitutional United States, you know, we got all this stuff. It's our, on the books already. We just have to follow the Constitution, and and then we'll be fine. You know, we'll go back to gold and silver as money, and uh, we'll kind of start fresh. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, uh, the sooner we get to all that, the better, uh, because the system now, it's just as crazy as the people involved in the system, you know? <laughs> You're, absolutely, absolutely. And they're going to have their solutions to the problems that they caused. Um, yeah. The question, like the special drawing rights and all the bull crap that is being put forward by the monetary masters at the moment, it will all fail. Ultimately they might, you know, get it running up and running for a couple more months. Uh, and then they'll, they'll see that people will see the problem with starting the exact same unbagged system that we had before. Uh, even if they pseudo back the special drawing rights with gold, it, it is a, it, they're trying to cobble together something that uh, has failed and has always failed. No unbacked system has survived the uh, more than eight years, eight to 10 years, except for this one. Uh, we yeah. went off the gold standard in 71, and that's when Alan Greenspan and his friends at the uh, Fed started the computer programs to rig the markets. That's the only way this unbacked system has lasted so long is they've been rigging the markets, rigging the price of all all things, especially gold and silver, since the 70s. It's an amazing feat to have an it unbacked really system go for so long. It really is incredibly you Faith and confidence, credit. my friend. Faith and confidence. You got it. Yeah. Well, they've managed to, uh, you know, the con in confidence. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Once a lie is exposed, how can you put that genie back in the bottle? Uh, damn hard. Damn hard to do that. I don't see any way you can. But hey, you know that uh, you know what they're about here. You know what yep. they're about. Yep. And now it's just, you know, it's just surviving the transition out of the old system and into a new one. And it's going to start breaking down worse and worse as we get closer to the summer. Um, get your gold and silver in your hands outside of the system and then you'll be fine. Uh, 
as long as you have it, like some dried food and a gun, it's going to take a week or two or three yes. or a month to get this thing up and running again. Correct. It certainly shall. And and what can you uh, what can you do about it? <laughs> you just have to just be protect prepared. yourself. You know, yeah. Be ready for chaos and be yeah. emotionally ready. That's I think that's the kicker. My power went out the other day, and every time my power goes out, I think, "Am I ready for this transition?" If the power goes out and there's no internet, there's no communications, there's no television, how are we going to survive um, like a week or two without good information? That's going to be the scariest part. Very scary, but. Like we've been through other crazy cataclysms in in uh, the U.S. in the world. We'll yep. somehow figure out a way to get through this one. And, yes, we will. We'll, we'll get through. Know. The question is, you know, how do you prepare yourself? How emotionally ready are you for this chaos? Yeah. Well, that and if you think it's crazy now, question. it's going to get a hell of a lot worse. That really is the question, isn't it? How do you prepare for it? And nobody's got really great answers for this, do they? I think there's some great answers. You want a you know a couple of weeks supply of food. You want yeah. to have your financial assets under your own control. Gold and silver obviously are mm -hmm. probably the best. I'm a big fan of Bitcoin because I think it'll be you. I think the plan is in China especially to use Bitcoin as part of the new monetary system. I think in the United States yeah. also, but in China it's going to be obvious, and that's what 1.4 billion people using mm -hmm. Bitcoin. <laughs> yes. Imagine the price of Bitcoin then. Imagine. Can you, can you imagine this? I can. I, yeah. I, I see Bitcoin going over a million dollars a coin. Yeah. And what, what's it right now? It's at like $1,200. Wow. Pretty remarkable. And, and it's gone up so much already, right? Well, yes and no. In, in relation to every other monetary asset, it's gone up nothing. It's a, it's a, it's a no-brainer type of asset. You know, the yeah. market cap of Bitcoins, I think, 18 or $19 billion. Mm-hmm. Which is nothing. I mean, that's yes. that's a, the, these banksters sneeze that in a day. <laughs> <laughs> that's a rounding error for all of their screw ups, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, some are it. some are screw ups. Some are just hidden. You know, oh. Catherine Austin Fitz has said there's there's basically two financial systems going: the one we see and we think is real, and then there's the real one behind the scenes. Yeah, the deep state. I mean, she was one of the early. Uh, I don't want to say proponents, but uh, she was she was a early whistleblower. Yeah, right uh, at at HUD. Yeah, and and the amount of money that that gets sucked out of our system to fund the deep state is just outrageous. So yeah, yeah, a lot of changes coming up. Yeah, I mean that five hundred billion that they can't find in HUD. Now HUD is pretty benign agency in many regards. Well, right? you would think. <laughs> you would think, right? I mean, yeah, they're just you, supposed you to think. build a housing for poor people and finance the housing markets, but it's becoming a big uh, backer of these derivatives, right? Huge and, uh, derivative portfolio. Yeah. And and that was always the plan. If You know, Alan Greenspan's uh, doctorate thesis has never been exposed, um, but Barron saw it one time and what they saw going sideways. Yeah. Hey, well, that's what's happening. It's going sideways. We, uh, we got three hot spots right now, and there's actually a lot more than that that you never even hear about. But just the three we're hearing about, Syria, Afghanistan, North Korea. What's going to happen here? Well, I, I think it's all going very well behind the scenes. Um, the bad guys, as I call them, the military industrial complex and the people who have controlled us for all these years are being thrown out. And I think I don't I don't put much credence in the people who are uh, thinking that Trump went to the dark side with all this. I don't think so at all. I think he's just playing uh, playing his role. And there's a secret agenda going on behind the scenes. I think Russia, China and the U.S. are all working together on this. Um, and you put those three countries together and and you know who it, that's what it takes to stand up to these bad guys, you know, the military industrial complex complex and the, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and whatever you want to call them, um, it does seem to me that the, the tide has changed and they are being removed from power, which is a great thing. Yeah. So let's look at that missile strike in Syria. It reminds <laughs> me it reminds me of Clinton's attack on Somalia when he blew up the aspirin factory. I mean, those cruise missiles look like they were some extra old models that they test fired to get rid of. And they hit kind of a meaningless target. 
They didn't fully destroy it, which was certainly within their capabilities. But nobody's saying that Trump is an agent of Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Your bond yeah. turns into common stock in line and dilutes the, the uh, common shock stock base of the company. Crazy, crazy invention, cocoa bonds. Uh, but they did it to rig, you know, financial engineering is what they called it in Europe. Oh, yeah. Well, these engineers uh, should go back and go back to school because uh, obviously they never stayed long enough to get a degree. Well, it's not like they teach you this kind of stuff in school. <laughs> school, well, you know, it's, some it's schools, in, skull and in, bones uh, yeah. school, right? <laughs> yeah, how to, how, to, how to rig the system to get around any rules that are put down by government, basically, is what they teach them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, that's uh, there's a certain portion that are trained to be going into this stuff. And, yeah, that's yeah. actually a, it's a, I think it's even a major in certain business schools, financial engineering. <laughs> <laughs> this, you think about it, you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. How to rig the markets with computers. How's that? Oh, beautiful thing. So so I wanted to talk to you about Casper. My son recently was shopping for a mattress. He went into a store. He was bombarded by salesmen trying to upsell him, spent thousands of dollars on a mattress, completely unnecessary. But Brandon is a very savvy shopper. So he goes online. He finds Casper.com, C-A-S-P-E-R.com, orders the mattress from them at an amazingly attractive, fair price. He's in love with the mattress, gets delivered to his door, opens up the package, lays it out, the mattress anymore, or are they? Well, that was the whole idea behind it. And you know, the whole false flag of the, the Syrian attack and uh, the original Syrian attack. And then Trump's false flag of, of his bombing in an empty airfield. If you see if you see pictures of the airfield, it's got uh, grass growing out of it. It's, it I mean, the MIGs. whole it has these the MIG 17s. I mean, they're o o probably older than you and almost as old as Mibix. They look like something out of the Korean War. <laughs> yeah, but if you look at the um, the whole concept, the uh, Obama administration tried to pull the same thing. Oh, my God, we have to save the babies, save the babies. And that's mm. the whole pretext to go into war in, in Syria because they want to put a pipeline through Syria. I mean, the whole thing is so insane. But Trump absolutely turned the cards on him. And now Trump isn't seen as the ultimate bad guy anymore, even though CNN is trying to make him out that way. Um, Trump's he's made a brilliant move by bombing an empty airfield to change <laughs> the narrative away from, you know, colluding with Putin to now Trump's a warmonger or, you know, not even a warmonger. No, Trump is no longer in bed with Putin. So now they can close that case you know, the investigation and then open up the real investigations into uh, what was going on with the pedophilia and uh, mm -hmm. military industrial complex. All that stuff needs to come out. And uh, if we're going to move forward, Trump has to be squeaky clean <laughs> as we get there. And I think he is. Uh, he's getting there now. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they had anything on him, Bix, don't you think they would have used it by this point? Like comes to life. These guys know what mattresses are about. It's got incredible supportive memory foams. It's an award winning sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right amount of bounce. They've got over 20,000 reviews with an average ranking of 4.8 stars. So they are really becoming the Internet's favorite mattress. You get free shipping and returns within the U.S. and Canada. You try it for 100 nights, risk-free. If you don't love it, they pick it up and they refund you everything. Designed, developed, and assembled in the United States. And you can save $50. You just go over to Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R dot com slash F-S-N. Put in the promo code F-S-N. You save 50 bucks. It's really an amazing company. They've put together an amazing product. They've simplified buying a mattress. You don't have to go into a store any longer and get swarmed by these commission salesmen who want to sell you the most expensive mattress around without respect to what your needs are, both financially and as far as the sleep surface is concerned. So just go over to Casper, C-A-S-P-E-R dot com slash F-S-N, order one today and save. So, well, what about social unrest here on the uh, home front? Uh, what do you see in there? Uh, it's already happening. I, I live five miles from Berkeley, and oh, every right. time yeah. there's any kind of protest, uh, there's you know rioting in the streets. Pretty soon it'll come to guns. That's what... <laughs> Uh, yes and no. Trump is not the, the main guy in charge of this counter revolution that's going on to throw out the bad guys. Trump is an important player and he was the only guy, you know, they tried to get Ron Paul in for the last, you know, few elections and, mm. and Ron 
in his early days, he probably could have got there, but as he got older, he wasn't as fast and he wasn't, you, you really needed a bull in the China shop yeah. to get put in place to take out these criminals. Uh, and, and that's exactly what uh, Trump is. He's certainly a bull in a China shop. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's, it's great. Uh, uh, it, as long as you know behind the scenes that this, this battle is pretty much already won by the good guys. Mm -hmm. And now it's all about taking out the few remaining you know, uh, strongholds. The European Union is still controlled by the bad guys, and, oh, yeah. and that'll be gone uh, with the implosion of the banking system over there. And the derivatives are just off the charts in Europe. Blow away anything that the U.S. is uh, saying we have problems with because of the lack of regulation they had. And now they're getting stricter regulations. So Deutsche Bank is, is once again falling. I think that stocks dropped like 30 percent um mm -hmm. in the last two months so yeah keep an eye on deutsche bank once again um they were kind of bailed out by the chinese and at the end of the third quarter last year when their stock dropped below ten dollars because it would have triggered a lot of these um yeah cocoa bonds meltdowns yep. well yeah the cocoa bonds are the big ones because cocoa bonds haven't been triggered yet uh it's convertible collateral barn bonds that get you know changed into common stock basically